Welcome, everybody, to our third episode in our series on Irish mythology. In today's episode, we will be taking a look at some of the stories of the mythological cycle. In Irish mythology, the stories of the religion are often broken up into several cycles, and the mythological cycle concerns the stories of the Tuatha Dé Danann, who we alluded to in past episodes. In today's episode, we are specifically going to look at the stories of the dream of Angus and the fosterage of the House of Two Vessels. Let's begin. Before we get started on our two stories today, Let's first take a look at what the mythological cycle was. The mythological cycle was the earliest set of stories from Irish mythology, and it tells the stories of the Tuatha Dé Danann, who we've discussed before. In some cases, fairies; in other cases, deities in their own right. The mythological cycle covers several stories. And what we're going to see is a common trend throughout the several cycles of Irish mythology, of stories of immigrants, whether it was the Tuatha Dé Danann of the mythological cycle or the historical kings of the historical cycle. Irish mythology is just like Irish history, and that it tells the stories of immigrants. And we're going to see a lot of these stories both. On the level of immigrants arriving in a new land and their struggles to find home in that new land, but also later stories of them dealing with a new wave of immigrants and struggling with the idea of what their home means when they are now the indigenous people dealing with immigrants moving on to their turf. In Irish mythology, Angus. Is the god associated with youth, love, summer, and poetic inspiration? His Welsh equivalent is Mabon, and Celtic equivalent Maponos, because he's also known by Machun Och, which is Irish for the young boy or young son, as he is the son of the Dagda and Bowen. In one story from Irish mythology, Angus has a dream one night in which he falls in love with a beautiful woman. When he wakes up, he asks his mother Bowen, the goddess of the river Boyne, and a cow goddess whose milk formed the Milky Way. And she advises the young Angus to search all of Ireland for a year to find his love from his dream. Angus enlists the help of his father, the Dog Da, as well, who also advises him to search Ireland for a year. After searching for nearly a year, Angus finally finds King Moab Derek of Munster, and this King of Munster finds the woman for Angus, but he makes it into a contest. He sends Angus to the lake of the dragon's mouth, where he finds 150 girls chained in pairs, including Kerr Ivermeath, the girl from his dreams. Every second salmon, Kerr and the other girls would transform into swans, and Angus is told he can marry Kerr if he can identify her in swan form. Using his powers, Angus turns himself into a swan. And he is able to convince Kerr to fly away with him. And the two sing beautiful music that puts all who listen to sleep for three days and nights. The fosterage of the houses of the two vessels tells the story of a young woman named Edna. But it tells a much larger story as well. This story begins with the crowning of King Aramon as High King of Ireland. Aramon was one of the Milesians, a group that would replace the Tuatha Dé Danann as the new dominant political power in Ireland, and they came from Spain. 
The Milesians were a little bit kinder to the Tuatha Dé Danann, however, than some of the other adversaries of the gods of Ireland. As following conflict over who would control the islands ended with a Milesian victory and a peace agreement that the Tuatha Dé Danann could continue to live in the hills and forests of Ireland. where they developed the power to become invisible to any who they wished to remain invisible to many of the tuatha nana established themselves in small mounds in some cases manufactured mounds and the fosterage of the house of two drinking vessels begins at the mound known as new grange Going back to our tale of Angus, Angus's foster father Elkmar had made Newgrange his personal mound, where he would live out the rest of his life free from the sights of the Milesians and the other new immigrants that may come to the island. But many people told Angus that he should tell his foster father. to leave the mound and to make it his own chief among them being the lord manadan of a far off distant island off the coast of ireland and scotland they managed to convince angus to tell ekmar to leave newgrange forever although eventually he does regret it elkmar leaves and Angus becomes the master of the mound. Manadan returns back to his home island. But meanwhile, Angus's new second in command, the steward under his foster father, has a child he asks Angus to raise personally. And that was the young maiden Etna. Edna would grow up to be the most beautiful woman in all of Ireland. But this kind of annoyed Manadan, who himself believed his own children to be the most beautiful girls in all of Ireland. So, as the news spreads of Edna being this beautiful maiden across the lands of Ireland, all the chiefs of Ireland want to come to see just how beautiful she really is including the young man Finbar who initially doesn't see Edna's beauty and insults her by saying how plain he believes she looks Edna is so sad from being told how unbeautiful she is that she stops eating all food altogether and becomes depressed after the lords of ireland return back to their homes angus is able to convince edna to have a meal with him but the only thing she will eat or drink is milk from a golden cow a cow that only has one other like it in all of ireland one belonging to manadan on his private island so Angus continues to try to deal with trying to get Edna to eat because she's obviously becoming very unhealthy. So he sends her to the only other place in Ireland with a cow that produces milk like his, the island of Manadan. And Manadan takes care of Edna and uses the milk from his cow to nourish her back to full health. When Edna returns to Newgrange, she finds Angus and goes to bathe with the other women of Newgrange in a nearby river. The problem is, she loses her power to become invisible to those around her. And when newly baptized Christians begin arriving near the river, the other women become invisible, but Edna fails in her ability to become invisible. What results is she becomes lost and takes refuge with one of the priests of 
the new Christian faith in Ireland, who teaches her all about Christianity. But the problem becomes that she is now no longer able to return to her people now that she is converted to this new faith. Eventually, Etna is finally able to rediscover Angus, but she has become so ill that Angus and all the other Tuatanadan are unable to help her back to life. So she returns back to the Christian monk that she met earlier. The Christian monk prays to send Patrick himself, the new patron saint of Ireland, to aid her. But even St. Patrick cannot save Edna. In her final moments, both Angus and the Christian priest pray to their respective lords and gods to bring Edna back to full health. But she dies after sickness two weeks later in the arms of St. Patrick herself. So... We just heard two really interesting stories there, right? We heard the story of the Dream of Angus, which is a love story. And we hear the story of the House of Two Vessels, a story that kind of weaves the tales of the war between the Milesians and the Tuatanadan. And these two stories combined together make for a really interesting metaphor for Ireland. A lot of people claim that Ireland is the land of sad love songs and happy wars. And perhaps these two stories put together may illustrate that perfectly. In next week's episode, we're going to be continuing our series on the mythological cycle by taking a look at the two battles of Moitura and what they tell us about the Tua de Nanan's struggle to both find home in their new world and to struggle with that new home against invading or immigrating new peoples. I'll see you in that episode.